Hello everyone, my name is Marcelo and in this video we will learn how to create a project in Wipad that writes data directly in a Google Sheet spreadsheet without using the user interface. So first uh, we will have to install a package that uh, contains some activities related to Google Drive, Google Sheets and so on. So uh, first create a project and now uh, let's install the package. So let's click on manage packages. Now let's click on all packages. And let's type in here on search G Suite. And will appear so uh, the package of activities ypath.gsuite.activities. So it's this one that we have to install. So let's click on it. Let's click on install and let's click on save to install the package on our project. So the package it's already installed. So uh, let's click on activities and if you type in here G Suite, we can see the activities related to the package that we will install. So we can see activities that works with Google Calendar, Google Docs, Drive, Gmail, and Google Sheets. So first uh, to to use the activities uh, of this package to be able to automate uh, something on Google Calendar, Google Drive or Google Sheets, we will have to use the G Suite application scope. So basically these activities will do the authentication uh, to be able so uh, the project to write data, for example, on our Google Sheets spreadsheet, on our Google Drive. So uh, let's drag uh, these activities. So the G Suite application scope to our project. Now let's click on activity and we can see here the property authentication type. So here we have to choose the type of authentication that uh, we will use uh, to authenticate the Google service. So we have here three options, OAuth client ID, API key or service account key. In this case, on this tutorial, we will use the option service account key. So let's choose this option. Now that we define the authentication type, we can see here on the properties panel too, uh, the properties related to which authentication type. So we can see here on service account key uh, here below the properties related uh, to this authentication. And we have at least to provide the key path. So uh, the key path is to provide a path to a file that we will get when we create uh, so the service account. So First, we have to create a service account with our Google account. To create a good service account, let's open the browser and you will have to log in on console.cloud.google.com and you have to log in with your Google account and will appear so this platform. So to create the service account, let's click here on API Z service. Let's choose the option credentials. Now let's click on create credentials. And let's choose the option service account. Now we have to define a name to our service account. So I will type in here, for example, YPath. And now let's click on here on the button create. Now let's click on continue and let's click on done. Now that we have our service account created, let's get the key. So to get the key file, let's click here on the, our service account. Now let's click here on the option keys and let's click on add key, create new key. Now here uh, make sure it's selected the JSON option and let's click on create. And now in this case I recommend to save the file on the directory of the project. So uh, I will click on save and now we have already the key file. So let's go to iPath Studio. And let's here on key path define the path of our file. So uh, because it's on our project, we can just pass here on the property the name of the file. So let's just rename the name of the file to be more easier to type in on the property. So let's type in here, for example, key. And now here on key path, let's open double quotes. And let's type in the name of the file. So key.json. Here on key type, make sure the option selected is the JSON one. And here on password, it's by default here a value. So let's just delete 
uh, this uh, value and let's leave empty this uh, value of the property. Now that it's done, all it's needed to the authentication be successful. Now let's go to activities and let's uh, type in here uh, right range. And let's drag the activity right range from uh, Google Sheets. So let's drag the activity inside the G Suite application scope. So uh, just by this way, it's possible to use this activity because if it's inside the G Suite application scope, we'll be authenticated. So uh, we have to define first a spreadsheet ID. So to get a spreadsheet ID, let's open just a browser. And uh, to get a spreadsheet ID, we have just to uh, copy uh, this text that it's inside uh, between best between D slash and then uh, copy until uh, the next slash. So let's just do control C and let's paste it directly here. So let's open quotes and let's uh, control V. Now we have to define the sheet name. So let's just check here. We can see that the sheet name here, it's sheet one. So it's the same as it's here. So it's uh, correct. Starting cell, let's uh, this one. And now data table. So let's just create quickly a data table. So let's use the activity real data table. And let's drag it before the G Suite application scope. So let's open here the option data table to create uh, quickly a data table. So let's type in here some text. So some values. And uh, some just one more row. Let's click now on OK and let's uh, so here on output create a data table that will contain the data. So let's do here control plus key. And now let's give the name for example DT Google Sheets. And now uh, let's type in here the name of the variable that we created. And now that we define the required properties on the right range activity, let's run the project to see how it's working. So let's uh, click on run. And we can see that we got an error. So it's saying here Google Sheets API has not been used on this project before or it's disabled. So uh, why we get this error? Because we have to enable the access uh, to the API. So in this case, the Google Sheets API. So to enable the access, Let's go to the browser and let's go to Google Cloud Platform. Let's just close this pop-up. So uh, to enable the access, first let's click here on Google Cloud Platform or better, let's click here on this option. And now let's go to API C service and let's choose the option library. And so here we are on the library API or API library. So let's search here by Google Sheets. And we can see here the Google Sheets API. So let's click on it. And now as we can see, it's disabled. So to enable it, let's click here on the button enable. Now that we enabled API, just wait some minutes because sometimes the action can take some time to propagate to the Google uh, system. So just wait five minutes and come back again to the video where we go uh, follow uh, this tutorial. So we are here again. So let's go to iPad to so run again the project to see if we got some another error. So let's click on run. And now we can see that we got a different error where it says the color does not have permissions. So basically uh, we have to share our spreadsheet with the service account that we created on Google Cloud Platform. So first let's get the address of our service account. So uh, let's go to here. Let's click on credentials. And let's copy the email of our service account. And now let's go to our spreadsheet. Let's click on share. And now here let's add our service account. So let's choose it. And now uh, let's click on send. And now that it's shared our spreadsheet with our service account, let's go again to iPath. Let's stop the project. And let's run again our project. 
So we are getting again another error. At this time says requested entity was not found. So we are getting this error because we have to enable so here on configure scopes. Uh, so we have to include our authentication scope related to spreadsheets. So let's click on OK. Let's stop the project. Let's click on configure scopes and let's include so uh, the authentication scope related to spreadsheets. So to the Google Sheets. So let's check here. Let's click on OK. And let's run again our project uh, to see how it's working. So finally, at this execution, we don't got any error as we can see here on the output. So let's open our browser on our spreadsheet to see if the data is on it. So as we can see, our project inserted the data table with success on Google Sheets spreadsheets. So I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any more RPA related videos. Bye bye.